saying? But it's not always easy being a man, because, you know, I was on a quick check now. How many men in here are proud to still be virgins? Any male virgins in the room? Okay. One guy. One guy. That's the thing, as much as men talk about sex, we hardly ever acknowledge the fact that we were virgins at some point. We never acknowledge our virginity. Especially, I grew up in South London where I never had the best sex education. While I grew up, you got sex tips like, well, you know what, yeah? If you drink Coke and she drinks Pepsi, she can't get pregnant, so. <laughs> it's not, help not helpful, not helpful. Um, I remember saying, for me, I remember what it was like to be like a virgin. I remember when I first became sexually aware, I woke up with two new friends, my virginity and my libido. But my libido was too weak and small and inexperienced to talk, so my virginity did all the introductions. So he was like, hey, Dane, I'm your virginity. I'm gonna make sure that you remain pure and innocent and you can have sex for a very long time. Yay! <laughs> I'm like, oh, how are you gonna do that, virginity? Well, basically, I'm gonna wait until your voice never breaks. It takes a really long time, and you don't grow any pubic hair, so you think you have a medical condition. Yay! <laughs> Which obviously made it very difficult for me to speak to girls, so I'd be with a girl and be like, hey, Simone, I really like you. She'd be like, oh, I like you too, Dane. Maybe we should take this to the next level. And then my virginity would be like, he does like you, Simone, but he likes PlayStation and FIFA and comic books and milkshakes and purity. Yay! <laughs> was tough, and then my parents would get involved, and my mum would say stuff like, Dane, your virginity keeps destroying your socks, I'm not gonna buy you any more. <laughs> under control. And then my virginity would chime in and be like, he's just exploring himself, and sex by himself is the safest way to have it. Yay! <laughs> and that was the early part of my teenage years, until finally, my libido got big enough and strong enough to approach me too. And he came up to me one day too, and was like, hey, Dane, can I speak to you for a second, please? <laughs> What's this about, libido? Well, it's about your virginity. I was thinking it's about time that we got rid of him. <sighs> what are you saying? I'm saying that we take him out. <laughs> Permanently. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? Is it purity and innocence? Yay! <laughs> oh, oh, virginity, I didn't realize you were here. Why don't you come along for a ride to Simone's house? And just like that, after having that companion for 18 years, my virginity was gone in seven minutes and 23 seconds. <laughs> um, that's two R&B songs, thank you very much. <laughs> and the thing is, I didn't really think I would miss my virginity, but my life was a lot less complicated before sex came along. Because all I have left now is my libido, and we have very different conversations compared to what I had with my virginity. Because I'll be out with my libido on a weekend, and he'll be like, hey, Dane, you see that girl in the dress over there? And I'd be like, yeah, she must be cold. It is November. What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> oh, um, no, yeah, I'm, no, I see her. Oh, uh, boobies, blah, blah, blah. Because <laughs> that's the thing, once like your libido awakens, then it takes over your body as a man and becomes a CEO of your manhood. And it's backed by the major shareholders, the Bulls Brothers. <laughs> Some very heartless capitalists down there. No, because it's tough, because despite having the best moral intentions, you've always got stakeholders with their own agenda. Because I'll come to them with very noble proposals, like I'll be like, hey guys, I'm thinking about maybe giving part of myself to somebody, getting out of the game, settling down, and raising a family. And they'll say, well, Dane, thank you for coming to the meeting. While we understand your need for paternity leave, there are still markets in Asia you have yet to exploit. Well, what does that mean? It means, until you've been with the blonde Eskimo, you're never getting out of the game. Because <laughs> we down here are all about diversity, Danes. <laughs> I remember when I first became sexually aware, I woke up with two new friends, my virginity and my libido. But my libido was too weak and small and inexperienced to talk, so my virginity did all the introductions. So he was like, hey, Dane, I'm your virginity. I'm gonna make sure that you remain pure and innocent and you can have sex for a very long time. Yay!